Now this is a massive pile of cuttings from the Christmas tree farm that we went to yesterday. I'll go ahead and put some footage in here. I did just use my phone. We went to our local nursery where they have a bunch of Christmas trees and we picked out the most fluffiest, most wonderful tree that we could find. It is now inside in our house waiting for its debut. It needs decorations, it needs lights, and then I will show you guys. But what I am doing today is taking this massive pile of cuttings and well, I'm cutting them. I'm gonna do some propagation but not only propagation, we're gonna make some Christmas wreaths. I will be separating this into two videos. Today's video is specifically on propagating Christmas trees. Off the top of my head, I cannot remember the type of tree that these cuttings are from. Um, obviously a spruce of some kind, but I will figure out what it is. And then down here, I will put uh, what they are, the variety name. Now, whenever it comes to propagating, any kind of cutting. It's really not that difficult, but there are a couple things that you do need to keep in mind. So I have, let's go ahead and just grab one. Now, I think before I start to explain how to do this, let's talk just briefly about what is propagation. Now, if this is your first time propagating anything, it can be a little confusing. You hear the word propagation and you think, oh boy, that sounds, that sounds difficult, maybe. Now here in my book, Crash Course into Gardening, this is book one on page 112, I do talk about propagation. Now I don't go full into depth about it because frankly, propagation all by itself can take up an entire book. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just read from this book so that you can get the gist and understanding of what propagation is. Propagation is the process of reproducing plants through various means such as by seeds, by cuttings, grafting, or even tissue culture. It is a common practice in agriculture, horticulture, and gardening to produce new plants from existing ones. Now, propagation through cuttings involves taking a part of the plant, usually a stem, a leaf, or a root, and placing it in water or soil until it forms roots and starts to grow into a new plant. It's really that easy. And since we are going to be using cuttings today, there's not really a need to go into any of the others. Now, right here, I have a five gallon bucket that is full of water. It is not full of water. There's some water in the bottom, okay? We wanna make sure that we keep our cuttings moist. Obviously, if they dry out, they're gonna die. So how do we do this? It's really simple. You're gonna want at minimum six inches. So I'm just gonna come right here and snip it. Now, we take this, this is obviously much larger than six inches, or probably about 10 to 11 inches here, which really, it's perfect. Uh, this is falling, we're gonna pull that off. We are going to clean up this stem. And when I say clean up, what I mean is we're just gonna cut all these little branches off. That's it. We're cutting them off. Now this will be our main cutting. We're going to strip the bottom part here of its bark, you can do a razor blade. Um, me, I'm just gonna be using my pruners. I'm just going to very gently, I'm cutting around in a circle. And now what I am doing, we are stripping the bark off of the bottom inch or so. This is a really simple, straightforward process by creating the round cut around and then um, skinning off one side. I should be able to just come through and pick it off and around. The idea was there, it never quite works out like it's supposed to. So I am just coming through and picking off and around just the bottom part of the, of the, blah, 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 of the bark. <laughs> My words are not with me today. Okay. Look, I tried to do this in, in front of the camera, but it's being difficult and the camera wants to focus on my face and not what I'm doing because it's so small, which fine, I get it. All right, we got it. All right, now you can see we have stripped off about an inch and a half or so of the bark. Now, what we are gonna do is take this, dip it in rooting hormone and pot it in soil, but I'm not there yet. While I am doing this, cause there's gonna be frankly, there's gonna be a lot. We're gonna be doing this for a little while. This is why I have the bucket. We take this and we just put it in the bucket. We wanna stand it up in the bucket. See, there we go. Just a bucket full with a little bit of water and we're putting in our cutting in it. One down, probably a couple hundred to go. Now we can see, this is when you're, you kind of figure out what you're doing. Um, it 
curves, it turns. We have multiple branches here. So this can make, we're gonna have probably three or four different cuttings from this one branch. And again, we come through, we clean up the side, cleaning up the sides. We don't want those branches in the way. You know, I realized something I didn't mention. When, whoop, when you are cutting for propagation, you wanna do it at a 45 degree angle. You never wanna cut straight on. And when I say straight on, what I mean is just a straight cut. We wanna do it at a 45-ish degree angle. The reason for that, there's two reasons. One, if it were the top, any water from the top would just roll off. It wouldn't stay on the top causing mold, mildew issues like that. And the second reason is whenever it is cut at that angle, once you strip the bark at the bottom and you allow for the rooting hormone, it, it helps the roots to push out better. That was not a very scientific explanation there, but, but the degree on the cut does help for better rooting. That didn't make me sound very smart, I realize. All right, cleaning up the sides now, and here, and there, and right here. Okay. Now, not every branch has this, but some of them do where it's, you got needles along the stem. So how do we do this? Well, that's very simple. You can continue using your pruners. You can get some straight edge scissors or you can get a razor blade, but you just wanna get them off. That's it. We're just very easily, I'm not trying to get the bark off here. That's not the purpose. We're just pulling all of the little needles off of it. And we're doing that for about, uh, I wanna say 60 to 70% up the entire branch. And you might be thinking, well, if you pull off all of those, all of the needles and all of the stems and leaves, how on earth is your cutting going to be able to grow roots? Because as we all know, plants grow through photosynthesis. And if the leaves cannot photosynthesize, isn't it gonna die? Mm -hmm. <laughs> when it comes to propagation, it really is 50-50. It could take, it could not take. It's all a gamble. All right, so we have cleaned up the stem here. Now I could go ahead and cut these off, but I'm not going to. This is all your prerogative, however you want to do it. Once I notice the, um, the needles, they will start to fall off. It will look like it's dying um, as during the propagation process. Now it's gonna take three to six months to even notice if anything's happening. Within six months, if the cutting that we're using or any of the cuttings or whatever, if they don't have any roots popping out of them, they're not going to. So 50-50 shot, it's all a gamble. And we are pulling the bottom of the bark off the stem. There we go, we have our angle, we have the stem debarked, I guess if we will. And we're gonna put that in the water as well. I'm gonna go ahead and get through all of this. Yes, it's a lot, I know. Um, and then I will bring you back with me. We're gonna go out back to the deck where I have filled up a little kiddie pool full of soil. And that is where we're gonna be doing our propagation at. It just makes the most sense to me. All right, we are now out back and it is time to use this rooting hormone to coat the end of the clippings so that we can put them in this pool of soil behind me. The soil that is in this little kitty pool is just potting soil. It's really nothing special. There's some perlite in it and whatever typically comes in your average potting soil. Now the rest of this process is really straightforward. Here I have the rooting hormone. I'm going to open it and I'm not gonna be dipping the clippings directly in here because I don't wanna contaminate the entire bottle. Uh, what I will be doing is pouring some of the powder in the lid. I take one of my cuttings. This one actually, they might be too big. <laughs> All right, here is my hormone, here is my clipping, and I am simply just going to coat the bottom of the branch, covering the entire area that I have stripped the bark from. 
we tap off the excess and then we just put it in the soil. That's it. It is really that straightforward of a process. Let me bring you closer while I do the rest. Now, if you can see, I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to, this has been sitting in water for a few hours um, and it is starting to leak its sap. So it's really sappy, really sticky, but that's, it's fine, it's its normal process here. And I'm just coating, making a mess as I go. All right, I just ran inside real quick and I grabbed this glass because frankly, this just is not working for me. So I'm just gonna pour some in the glass and I will be able to rub around the cuttings which should coat them better. Oh yeah, that works much better. Any of the cuttings that are like oozing their sap, I'm just pull, rubbing the sap off. I said pulling, but I meant rubbing it off. Now that I'm about halfway through um, getting all of these cuttings with the old rooting hormone and into their soil, let's talk real quick about why I'm doing it this way. Now there are many, many ways that you could propagate your plants. You don't have to use a big pool like this, but I'm doing this because I already know that it's a 50-50 shot with each of these cuttings that I'm propagating. They may take, they may not take they may not take. <laughs> so because of that, I figure to save on space because I don't have a lot of space right now, we're still working on the garden and I don't have the greenhouse yet, um, I need to save on space and this is just what's gonna work for me right now. In about three weeks, I will start checking to see if anything is happening, but I don't expect any kind of rooting for any of these cuttings to really happen until they're probably at least three months. And by then, it'll be February, and it will be starting to warm up a bit. When you are propagating anything through the winter, it's going to take longer than if you were doing it in early spring or even in the summer. And the reason for that is because in the winter, as we all know, most plants will go dormant. So they will not be doing very much for their roots. Now, because these are evergreen trees, they should stay green. The likelihood of the needles falling off of these though is high. We are trying to grow a whole new plant from a branch. Now I could do this same process and I could use a pot like this or even like this. The size, again, doesn't really matter. I'm doing this to save space. And there is no need for spacing. I could pack these in as tightly as I want to. Um, it's really not going to cause any issues either way. So my goal is really just to fill up this pool with these cuttings. These specific cuttings are Douglas fir. I will be going around my property. I have a few cypress trees, uh, one of them being the green giant, and my husband really wants me to propagate that one. So I will be doing that one, obviously, in a second container. I don't want to mix up the varieties. I want to keep what's what with what's what, if that made sense. Well, a wasp just landed on my rooting hormone, and it doesn't want me to have it, and I am terrified of wasps, so I'm just going to let it have it. I'm getting to the clumpy point now because of the syrup and the moisture that got into the hormone, which also is an exact reason why we do not use the tub that it came in. Alrighty, we are on the final few. And when I am done with this, I will be mulching this with using leaves. We've got obviously a bunch of leaves that are falling as it is fall. So I'm going to use those leaves as my mulch to help with the moisture and hopefully to help keep anything out of here. Now I'm gonna take the water from the bucket and pour it into my watering can and then water them in. 
Now here I have two decent sized um, trunks from tree. I don't think that this is going to do anything, but I want to try. I would really like to try. They have also been sitting in the water, as you can tell. I really don't think this is going to do anything. I'm not even going to put the hormone or anything on it. Let's just see what happens. Now that I have everything covered with the leaves, the leaves are just kind of in there. As they get moist, as it rains, they will settle a little further into the soil. And now I don't think that the trunk pieces here are gonna root, but I would like to try. So that is what we're doing. All right, well now we have all of our cuttings with the rooting hormones on them placed into this little kiddie pool full of soil. So this is where they will be propagating. I am doing this outside. Again, I do not have my greenhouse. We dismantled it and we still need to build a new one, but we're not there yet. Um, so this is what we're doing, outside propagation. I will check back in in a couple of weeks, probably three or four, and give you an update on how it's going. Um, and then we'll just kind of take it from there. This is the first time that I am propagating these Christmas trees. This, these specifically are Douglas fir. I will be, again, like I said earlier, taking cuttings from other trees that I have in my, on my property, and we will be propagating those as well but I think that for those I might do them inside I don't know Josh doesn't like soil inside so we don't have inside plants um, probably they'll be outside too but I think I need to at least figure out some sort of greenhouse like contraption maybe if I can I don't know get some two by fours and build like a square and then cover it in the greenhouse plastic I don't know. We'll see. We will see. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up. Leave me a comment down below and don't forget to subscribe to Hollow Acres. There will be plenty more propagating videos and information on propagation that I, oh, yellow jackets. They're all over the place and the sap is definitely, oh, they want them. Okay. And I'm covered in it. Ooh. All right. I don't want to get stung. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today, and we'll see you next time here on Hollow Acres. Cuttings from the Christmas. Um, what was I told they were? It was spruce. What, what kind of spruce? It is a common practice in agriculture. We don't want it to fall down, so there's... But the... Bleh. Isn't it going to grow? <laughs>